Hi everybody, I am so glad you're here. I'm doing this recording because I have had the hardest time getting the Google um, Hangout to work. And I did not want to promise you guys five ways to conquer your fear one more time without it working. So instead of being caught up in the way it gets done, my promise to you is to provide you the information. I think it's interesting that um, with the conquering fear video and out Hangout, I've had so much trouble getting it done. Uh, because with other hangouts, there wasn't this kind of a problem. So I think that like once I can help you guys learn to conquer your fear, um, I once heard it said that all your blessings are on the other side of fear. So just imagine that in the world of the opposition, some people call it the devil, um, some people call it resistance, the blessings that is being kept, trying to be kept from you through your fear. So let me start with, um, I tell you, I'm going to teach you this through my story, right? So conquering fear. <clears throat> I will start realizing that a lot of things that I wanted to do with life coaching and creating events, I was hesitant to do them. I, you know, like there was all this chatter in my head about the what ifs. What if nobody comes? Who cares? Who are you to think you can do this? Um, what what kind of expert are you? What you you're you're a graphic designer. You're not you're not a coach. You're not an expert. Like so, just all of these negative things kept playing in my head, and for a while I listened to them, until one day it occurred to me: all I have to do is make the decision. Like if I put an event out, or if I say I'm a life coach, if I start writing books, that is what's gonna make the difference. Just me doing it. So in the process of doing that, I started realizing as well as, yes, I'm afraid, but it's not going to keep me from doing it. So step number one to conquering your fear, becoming present. In order for us to conquer our fears, we have to learn to quiet our minds. We have to learn to, one, if we're going to listen to the chatter, pay attention to it. Pay attention to all of those thoughts that are running, running around in your head, what they're telling you, what they're telling you, who you are, who you can't be, what you can't achieve, and why. So instead of participating in it, instead of listening to the chatter and, and allowing it to control you, just listen to it. Observe it. And when you start observing the chatter, you'll start, you will be able to realize that there is a voice and a chatter, and then there is you. So because you are not the thoughts, because a lot of times thoughts will come into our head and it's not like we are the author of the thought, nor are we a willing participant in the thought. It's not until the thought shows up that now we start um, consciously thinking about it and what I call meditating on it. So it's what are you meditating on? So step number one to conquer your fear is becoming present, listening to your thoughts, and then creating... Um, creating a connection to what are you thinking? How are these thoughts controlling me? And what are they doing? So recently, <clears throat> here's the story. Recently, I had a meeting with a gentleman who I, um, I connected with him via email because he's going to help me get some printing work done here in China. Uh, the, the struggle with going to get stuff printed here is I don't speak Chinese. So I always need someone who can kind of be my middle person. So I reached out to a, um, a Yahoo group, and this gentleman said, okay, I'll help you. The more we got to talking via email, the more I started learning that he owns a business here in China. Well, I have been praying for a business mentor. Went to meet this gentleman. We talked completely, got off subject about the printing because I'm more interested in paying attention to my prayers. God, I need a mentor. Meet Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins owns a business. I put it all on the table. Fear would have said, don't you dare, he's going to reject you. <clears throat> but I didn't care. I took the chance. I put it all on the table. And by the time at the end of our conversation, Mr. Collins said, Kanisha, I will partner with you. So not only is he going to be my business mentor, he's also going to bring me under his business so that I can offer coaching here in China. I didn't know how I was going to do that before. So so God is opening that door. But the, the, the point is, here's the part of the story you have to pay attention to. The chatter. What was I telling myself when, when Mr. Collins said, I will partner with you? I left his office and immediately my thoughts said, start telling me, you're not ready for this. 
um, you don't know how to do this. You don't know how to coach the way he's asking you to coach. And I had to say, no, be quiet. You are fine. You're exactly where God would have you to be. I had to quiet my thoughts. So that is step number one, becoming present. When, when, when Colin said that to me, that you can be these things, I immediately went to the future. And I started looking at everything that was going to be required without even knowing. So imagining everything that I thought would be required to be the life coach that he was saying he would partner with me to be. I wasn't present. Come here in the present. The present is I'm fine. I have everything I need right now. Quieting my mind. That's what you have to learn to do. Step number two, we're conquering your fear. You have to identify the fear, right? So um, a lot of times we cannot change a thing until you know what the thing is. Because I know my fear, there are four fears that I know about and that I deal with. Fear number one, the fear of rejection. No matter what I do, people are going to reject me. Fear number two, feeling helpless and powerless. Fear number three, feeling worthless. I'm not worthy of this. Um, this will never happen for me. Those kind of thoughts. Fear number four, the fear of failure. Now, there are many of us who, when you ask, what is your fear? You'll say, all of them. <laughs> all those things scare me. Perhaps that's true. But what you have to learn to do is quiet yourself. Step number one, quiet yourself. And then start looking deeper at when you think about these four fears, rejection, helplessness, or feeling powerless, worthlessness, or failure, which fear shows up so much in every situation that you're in that it stops you from going to the next step? So I know my fear. My fear is rejection. So here I am sitting in you know, Colin's office. I've just met this man. He's offered me the opportunity to partner with him and expose, you know, put me out there to expose me to the, the Beijing community because he already has the connections. His company has been operating here for now over 10 years and he has these great events and he says, what we'll do is we create an event around you. We have you come speak. If I stay in my fear of rejection, I will tell myself, who am I? These people aren't going to like me. Here, here is my number one false belief about my fears. <clears throat> that, that shows up in my rejection. Why are they going to listen to me? I'm black. Why wouldn't they listen to me? But because I'm aware, because I know how to quiet my mind, I identify my fear, I know that it's rejection, it's just a thought. So just like that, those negative thoughts come, I can switch it to a better thought. So my new thought is, I am Kenesha Berry. I am amazing. I'm amazing just because God made me. You are amazing just because God made you. The I am amazing and the people that I will stand before and present are amazing people. And they can't wait to meet me and I can't wait to meet them. So that's step number two. Identifying your fear. <clears throat> step number three. Excuse me. I, I don't know what's going on with my throat. So step number three in conquering your fear is challenging. Challenging the thought. Challenging the fear. And I was kind of talking about that a little bit when I was talking about step identifying so step number three is challenging your, your, your fear, challenging the thought. Your thoughts are telling you, for me, again, I make everything personal because I want you guys to really get this. The thought was telling me, Kenesha, you're not ready. I love that excuse. Isn't that a good one? Kenesha, you're not ready. You're not ready to be exposed to the expat community. Many of us hold that, um, that thought when new opportunities arrive. You're not ready. You're not ready. Here's what I come to believe, and here's what I come to know. That God will not even present us with the opportunity if we weren't ready for it. I want you to really get that. The way God, my experience, and even when I read the Bible and I see it, the way I see God working in our life is he, he's always preparing us. And you, you'll miss this if you're not paying attention to your life. He's always preparing you for the next thing. So God has spent this time Everything I've been doing, last year counseling, standing in front of Asian um, population, standing on stages, teaching them about parenting, teaching them about how to love their child in a healthy way. I was the only black woman in the room. So with my false belief that no one is going to listen to me because I'm black, God said, challenge that thought. You stood in front of an all-Asian community, 
and you said that and those women stood in line waiting to talk to me after I gave my speech. So already they're not going to listen to me. That's a lie. That's a fear. That's a false belief. So I'm challenging the thought. If Colin is really ready to create an event for me and put me out there, I am ready. God has prepared me. I am ready to stand before these people and make this money and make these connections because I am ready. I am everything God would have me to be. I have all the information I need. And when it's ready, when it's time for me to do that event, I will be ready. I had to challenge my fear. I had to challenge my fear of rejection because if I keep listening to my fear of rejection, I could come up with a whole lot of reasons as to why I should not partner with this man and become everything that I want to be, everything I've asked God to help me to become. So let's go back over it. Number one, becoming very present, listening to your thoughts, connecting to them, knowing which thoughts serve you, which one puts you down, and then know how to shift or stop those thoughts. Step number two, identify your fear. Does the fear of being helpless control me? Does the fear of being rejected control me? Does the fear of feeling worthless control me? Or am I so controlled by the fear of failure that I won't even try? You've got to identify that. I can help you identify it, but I can't identify it for you. You have to identify that. Step number three, challenge it. What are these thoughts? Is it true? Because a lot of times if we take the time to challenge the thought, we will have a truth that will erase the thought. So my, again, like I said earlier, my thought was, I'm just, you know, I'm just a black woman. And honestly, I don't even see myself as a woman when I'm in that fear state. I'm just a black girl from Little Town in a high ski. Who are they going to listen? Why would they listen to me? False belief. I've stood in front of people. I spent a whole school year. And nothing, none of my clients, none of my students, none of my, their parents, not one African American. And these women listened to me. And they would come by my office and they was excited. So that's a false belief. And it's a lie. And it's fear. So I had to know that. So I need you to connect and know that too. Step number four. <clears throat> Reprogram your thinking. Reprogram your thinking. The Bible tells us to renew our mind daily. Renew your mind daily. And sure, you want to do that with scriptures. Because the scriptures are a powerful, powerful tool. You know, the Word of God is actually a weapon. And all all of this is the whole idea of fear. It is spiritual battle. Um, oftentimes we don't think of it that way, but it's absolutely spiritual battle. Most, all spiritual battles, we, we like to sometimes, some people, I won't say all of us, but some people think of spiritual as the devil and God and angels and it's all outside, like it's out here. It's right here. The, the demons you're fighting, they're in here. They're not outside, they're in here. And they're there. Fear is the biggest one of them. He, he, can, he can keep you from everything. All he needs you to do is to buy into the false thoughts that he's, he's programmed and he's telling you. And maybe life has given you some of it, but how much do you, why do you have to keep eating it? It's like spoiled meat. If the meat is rotten, why would you keep eating it? You wouldn't. So if the belief is full and rotten and dead, why keep believing it? You don't have to. But now, the Bible says to renew your mind. God does not say, stop thinking it. He says to change your thought. That's what renewing is. I need a new thought. So what is going to be your new thought? Now you have to create a new thought to help you get past the old belief. Again, my new thought became, I am amazing. The people that I'm meeting are amazing. They can't wait to meet me because I'm amazing and I can't wait to meet them to find out what makes them amazing. So every time I'm, I enter a new situation, um, every time my false belief shows up that they're not going to like me because I'm black or who am I, then I have to go into my amazing speech, right? I have to reprogram my mind. I have to remind myself of all the successes that I have. I do not focus on my failures. I focus on my successes because I have, honestly, I have way more successes than I do failures and it's always just a story so if I was to go into a room and no one you know everyone in the room rejected me I could I could focus on that or I could say I felt rejected 
I had one person that came over and introduced themselves to me. Well, I introduced myself to them, and they asked me a lot. So I can focus on the thing that serves me and gives me power. That is what we do when we're reprogramming our mind. Step one, become very present. Step two, identify your fear. Step three, challenge your fear. Challenge it. Is this true? Number four, reprogram. All right? I hope you guys have that. So the last one, step five, into conquering your fear. Plain, simple, practice it. Practice it, practice it, practice it every single day. Live it. Start small. The greatest thing you can do is once you identify your fear is now every situation that you encounter, every new opportunity that comes your way, um, every time you feel afraid, don't just say, oh, I'm just so scared. I'm so scared this is going to happen. Call it what it is. I am scared I'm going to be rejected. Am I going to be rejected? Probably not. I can walk in a room with my fear of rejection. I can walk in a room, and I've done this before, and I, in their days, I still do it. I can walk in a room and say, mm, they don't like me, so I don't like them, so I'm just not going to say anything to them. I'm walking in full in fear. My shoulders are usually slumped a little bit more. My head is held down a little more, and I won't make eye contact because that's what it looks like to feel rejected. I know what it looks like. I felt it in my body. I've come completely aware of what my life feels like when I'm walking in that fear. That's what I'm asking you to do. Get totally in, in tune to what the fear looks like. So when you say, I'm afraid, I want to start the business, but I'm afraid. I want to go into this great relationship, but I'm afraid. Start paying attention. Hmm, what happens when I'm afraid? What is this fear? Am I, am I afraid that I'm not worth the love? Am I afraid that I'm not worthy of being the CEO of a company? Am I afraid that if I do this and I fail, Everyone is going to laugh because, hey, I failed before. Identify the fear. And then you can talk yourself. You can, you can challenge the fear. But as long as you're just calling it afraid, you won't challenge it. Because you don't know what it is. You can't connect to it. But the moment you start challenging the fear, you get opportunity to reprogram the thinking. And once you reprogram the thinking, you get to practice it. And that is what step five is. So I know it sounds really simple. I'm going to do... <clears throat> At the end of this, I hope I can do this live and that you guys won't have to watch the video. But if you're watching the video, I'm just one, I'm glad you're here. It means that you're ready to make a change in your life. Right? Um, all decisions, I mean, all changes happens by a decision. And a true decision requires an action. So the fact you're watching the video, you've already made one decision and you have already committed one action. So the next action is how do I go deep, Kanisha? How? How do I really do this? I hear you, and it, it makes sense, but I don't know how to do it. Two, two things I'm offering at the end of, um, that you can do. You can go to my website, verythoughtfullife.com. You can download, uh, I have two packages. One package on how to conquer your fear. There are five videos, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do each of these things. How to, one, become present. Two, um, identify the fear. Three, Challenge the thinking. Four, renewing your thinking. And then five, living it out. For five, for $50, only $50, you got to think about it. It's like $10 a, a session to change your life. You can get the videos, you can watch the videos, and you can do the self-work. Or, if you need more help, for $150, you can have five sessions with me and the videos. And we will, you have access to me, have access one hour per session. So you have five hours with me. Um, so you will watch the video. I will send you a questionnaire. You will answer the questions, and then we'll have a session to really help you learn to live these, these skills out. And once you do that, it's time. It's time to live your best life. So I hope this helped you. I'm so glad that you chose to, to watch the video. Um, and it's my hope that we'll be able to do this live. So please do not allow... If, if you like to call it the devil, do not allow the devil to keep you, um, keep your blessings from you another day. You hold the power because God has given you the power. The thing you have to remember about the scriptures in the Bible, everything is already done. God says, in the Bible it says, by his stripes you are healed. The work is done. Jesus did his part. So pray, pray.
Pray to align yourself with God, but stop praying and waiting for God to do something. Now God is saying it's your turn to do something. I've done the best thing I can do for you. I've sent you my son. I gave you an example. I've told you you are healed. Walk in your healness. Walk in your wholeness. It is your turn to show up. So if you're ready to do the work, either one, get the videos. $50, five, think of it like that, $10 per video. But this is this is freedom. And Or two, I need a coach. I need someone to help me through it. Let me contact Kenesha. I hope you will do the work. Um, I hope to hear from you soon. If you have questions, feel free to email me, inbox me. Do what you have to do. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.